Do you know when you procrastinate as an INFP, you are simply trying to protect yourself? A recent study that came out earlier this year is throwing in an interesting twist that would explain why self-control and time management techniques aren't working in tackling procrastination. Make sure you watch this video all the way to the end because I'm sharing with you today interventions that actually work for procrastination. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Jerrica Delbridge, your career consultant and occupational psychologist. I help intuitive introverts and highly sensitive people establish work and life they can happily thrive in. If that sounds good to you, make sure you subscribe and you hit that bell so you can be notified every time I post a new video. So we've previously looked into procrastination in two diverse ways. In this video, we covered how delaying making decisions or procrastinating to make a decision for an INFP can actually be a positive and a strength depending on a situation. This happens because as an INFP, you need time to form patterns and recognize connection in the things you're observing or information that's coming to you. So sometimes when you're delaying making a decision, you're actually giving yourself space and time to make better decisions because you're recognizing better patterns or you're able to recognize and form conclusions that you probably wouldn't otherwise be able to do if you had rushed to make a decision. This could be simply because you just want to make a good decision or it could be because you're trying to avoid negative consequences. In either case, you just want to do the right thing, right? In this other video, we covered how procrastination can actually be such a contradictory phenomena. So many of you have agreed with me that when you delay finishing up a project or wait till the last minute to do your work, you actually produce a very good piece of work. And it can be such a contradiction to you because you're thinking, well, should I be waiting till the last minute because that seems to be my best work when I am most depressed. But the thing that you don't like is the feeling of being rushed and you just hate that rush and panic in the last minute so you enjoy the outcome but you hate the process so one thing to note is that both of these topics were on intentions what you were trying to achieve at the end what you were trying to get at in today's video i'm taking you one step back and sharing with you one easy predictor of procrastination so remember Previously, we've talked about intentions. Today, we are covering a predictor. Can you guess what that predictor is? Negative effect or negative feeling. So the study that was published earlier this year shared that when you're experiencing negative effect today or you're experiencing negative emotion today, that was shown to be a predictor of you procrastinating the following day. Isn't that crazy? Basically, if you're feeling bad and you're feeling lousy and you're not in your best mood and you're not feeling the best emotions, it tends to undermine your ability to self-regulate and in this case, to not procrastinate. So chances of you actively and effectively going after your goals when you're feeling lousy are very, very, very minimal. So what the authors of this study therefore noted was that the typical interventions of self-control and time management techniques may actually be misplaced if the predictor is actually more to do with emotional regulation. So instead, based on their findings and theory, they suggested interventions that have more to do with emotional regulation strategies that help us reduce the negative effect or the negative feeling we are feeling in the first place, which then leads to the procrastination. So this study made me super excited because if you've watched me for a while, if you've worked with me, you know I am a big advocate for fostering tolerance and acceptance for everything that comes our way, whether those feelings and emotions be positive or negative. When we're quickly brushing off negative feelings, we're not really learning to be with them. We're not really learning or developing any techniques to actually be a wholesome person, which is why we struggle. If you've noticed, I don't know about you, but I know sometimes when we see somebody cry or they're sad, we are very quick to want to cheer them up. We are very quick to want to say it's going to be okay because it's, it makes us feel uncomfortable to sit with 
someone who is going through a difficult emotion, we just want to quickly fix it. And so we can move on to a more happier state because we just don't want to, or in my view, we lack the ability to sit with things that don't feel pleasant because we weren't taught in our society. We don't allow people to sit with everything that comes with life. We're very quickly to want to fix them so we can just experience what we perceive as the more pleasant and acceptable way of being, right? So the better we can learn how to be, and I don't want to use the word regulate because I know this is what the study kind of advocates for. Learn to regulate your emotion because to me then that I feel gives the impression that you need to do something with it. And I'm more of the position that you just need to be with it. Because when you are happy, you're not trying to do anything with being happy. You're not trying to figure it out. You're just with it. So likewise, if you're feeling sad and you're feeling some other kind of negative emotion, is to learn to be with it rather than to regulate. You don't regulate joy, right? (laughs) So I'm an advocate for being with both in the same way. If you've taken my career workshop, then you know I have gone extensively into this topic in that workshop because it's such a transformational approach that has actually been adapted in several clinical therapeutic practices. For example, the acceptance and commitment therapy, affect regulation training, which would be very much applicable in this case when it comes to negative and positive affects. So most of the time we get caught up in trying to figure out what's that technique. We think it's a technique thing. We think we haven't quite figured out the right time management um, hack. And we're missing that it may actually be just a symptom that has been triggered by something else. And in this case, what this study has shown is that positive affect and positive feeling a day before does not lead to procrastination the following day. So if you have been struggling with procrastination and if you are an FP, I know a lot of us have, is to actually not to be frustrated with yourself, thinking it is just your lack of being able to time manage or you need to start early. If you have found a rhythm of how you work, stick with that. If you find time management techniques helpful, continue on with that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's place for everything. But what I'm trying to share with you today, and I hope you can embrace it because you can start paying attention to how your emotional state the day before would lead to your actions the next day. If you're struggling to be productive in whatever pace that may be for you, we all have different paces. Whatever pace may be for you to be productive, if you're finding that you're struggling, chances are it's the emotional regulation part that needs a little tweaking. So pay attention to that and let me know if this is actually making any sense. Are there any light bulb moments going off in your mind to go like, ah, that's what it was? I can so see that, right? And if you go like, I don't think so. I can see any connection. I think it's something else. Share with me in below because I'm always learning. And when I found this study, I was super excited because I have found that when I am numbing, i.e. when I'm sitting in front of Netflix for a bit, I'm realizing there is a negative thing that I'm not dealing with. And it's just too much. And I, my initial like reaction is always try to numb. And then when I'm noticing that, then I, I, when I spend time in quiet time in prayer and meditation, by God, that usually comes up for me. I realize what's that emotion. Sometimes I cry and it helps me feel better. And once I do, I'm able to move on. So for me, it was like, yeah, that has been the case for me. So I was super excited to share this with you. So I do want to add that one of the most challenging negative emotion that I've noticed a lot of INFPs have is overwhelm. Simply being an introvert, that's just biology. I've covered more about that in this video right here. And it's one of those things that I have seen a lot of people struggle when it comes to career transitions. And even though we like the idea of change, the process of it can feel very overwhelming because most of the time we don't know whether the decision we're making is the right one for us. Is it the right time, right? There may be so many elements we're trying to figure out whether it's the right thing or not. Is is 
going off and doing my own thing, start my own business, is it the right thing, right? It can feel pretty overwhelming. And because it's overwhelming, you then just tend to procrastinate making that decision. You don't take the plunge. You don't go for what you know in your heart you need to go for. Because I know this year has made us think about our lives, what we want. There's been changes that has been forced upon us, things that we didn't anticipate and are here and we have to deal with them, right? And that can be both an exciting feeling and a sickening feeling. Like we are pushed to make decisions when we don't feel ready. We didn't plan it, but they're here and we have to make them. So keep in mind when you're trying to make those decisions that chances of you taking action is really determined on how you're regulating that emotion, that overwhelming emotion previous to making that decision. Because that would really help you not to be stuck in like a cycle of thinking about things, not taking a step, thinking about it, not taking a step, and you end up being stuck, right? And we've talked about this before, but I just really want to emphasize that today because I realize the times we're in, we are forced to make decisions even when we don't feel like the decisions we want to make just yet. But there is value in that if we can recognize the main reason that we may have been procrastinating is we're just not sitting with and facing whatever that negative emotion that's coming up. And that's making it very hard to then the next day make the right decisions and take the right steps towards where you want to go. If you're feeling lost and frustrated as to why you don't have that work in life that you really want and you can't figure out where's the missing link, make sure you check out the free ebook that is in the description because that will help you pinpoint the area that you may have been overlooking. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. YouTube needs to know that you liked it. If you liked it inside and you don't tell them, they won't know. They won't know. And if you haven't subscribed, I'm not sure why not. Up to this point, you know you're enjoying the content. You might as well subscribe and be part of this community. Would love to have you here. As we always say on this channel, focus on being than doing. And until next time, have a rested life.